This time on Captain Cass's Laboratory, we have the Department 56 Cinema 56 Movie Theater from 1999. It's in a little bit of a disrepair state. Uh, not because of abuse or anything, it's because we live in Arizona, and if you store stuff, unfortunately, things break down. So the sign has come off and broke one of the wires. The whole fascia is separate, you can see. Um, I have the AC adapter for the lights, which some of them don't work. <clears throat> That's why it's here. And to try and reassemble all this stuff. I do not have the light bulb. I didn't need that because if anybody has the Parma 56, they all come with that big light bulb that fits in the back. So if I plug it in, we got, well, almost all the lights are working. There's a couple that aren't. I'm going to turn off the light right here so it's not so bright and give you a better look. So the sign's not lit up because the wire's broke. Uh, the light in the middle of the marquee is out. You can see that one and that one are on. And if we turn her up, side down, you can see the light in the ticket booth is on, but the four lights on the bottom of the uh, awning are out. And of course, there's no lights in the windows because that requires the big bulb, which again, I don't need to try and repair the rest of this. I'm going to unplug it. The other lights are flashing. We have all these red and yellow and green lights. Looks like the reds flash. And some of them are on, some of them are off. We got a cluster of three right here that don't light up right in the very front. So, well, let's uh, try and do a little bit more disassembly to get to the uh, inner workings of the AC power side. Looks to be plenty of slack on the wire that powers everything that comes off of this AC adapter port. You can see I can actually pull the wire out. There's plenty of slack. So you don't shouldn't shouldn't well no yet have to unscrew this. This can be unscrewed. It's got a notch that cuts across the face so you can unscrew with a screwdriver, or in this case I can unscrew with my fingers. <clears throat> so we'll see how we can get this piece out. It is getting caught on the ticket booth. Now we got something. Got a piece of blue, which may have come off the side of the marquee. There are two alignment pins that are plastic that are cast that go straight in on the top, one here, one here. I can't lift this out because it's hitting the alignment pins because it's getting caught on the ticket booth. The ticket booth, I can slide up and down, but I can't get it high enough to clear the ticket checker. I don't think I have enough play and this plastic to flex it. Let's see. I'm gonna turn this back on. <clears throat> Try and give you a slight close up. Oh, you can see right behind where the glue is, there's a pin. And then if we flip this over, this plastic right here hitting this ticket booth. This does slide up and down, but I'm not going to be able to clear the person. And you can see where it glued on right in here. So I might have to heat this up and pop the ticket booth off. So 
pretty sure I'm going to have to. So. And then the wires for this are broke. And but this is plastic and there's a seam, so I might be able to open this up to replace the light and resolder the wires. And then glue it back into place. So just checking the ticket booth to see if there's any wiggle in the glue. There is not. So we are going to have to heat it up. So I'm going to turn on my heat pen, which is tangled up at the moment. I still haven't found my spudgers. No idea where they disappeared to. I had three and now I have zero. <laughs> doing really good. So I'm going to use a small blade or flathead screwdriver. I'm going to warm the area. I have my temperature set at 110 degrees Celsius. So it's not super hot. Uh, that's just a little bit over boiling for water. I'm just going to go around the snow at the base of the ticket booth and see if I can uh, heat up the bond without damaging the paint. Blow some heat in here while I poke and prod. Turn on my temperature a little bit. And I'm going to get a slightly finer screwdriver, much smaller, that might be able to get under this uh, glue joint. This thing does not want to come apart. I'm trying to see if there's any flex in it now since it's so hot. It's actually hard to touch.
What I'm going to try and do is I'll take the booth off because it is actually uh, starting to cause the paint to come off. Little pieces of white is the paint separating from the uh, piece. So I'm going to see if I have enough heated flex area to try and get these two tabs to separate. And I can try and walk them up the building. Uh, that's the problem with porcelain or ceramic painted pieces that sometimes the glue they use requires such a high temperature that it um, can cause the paint to separate. You're actually causing the paint to become a uh, almost liquid and it starts chipping or peeling off and I am trying to avoid too much damage for touch-up. this so you cannot take it apart easily. Looks like I'm not going to have a choice. I'm going to have to get this bottom to separate. I'm going to have to get it so hot it's probably going to take off more of the white paint. Um, we can do some touch-up. I, mean, I don't know if you can tell, but the paint on the top is cracking. So I can probably do some touch-up with some white acrylic paint on the bottom once this is ready to be glued back together. Um, luckily, the porcelain underneath, or the ceramic, is also white, so it's hard to see. But the paint is starting to come off. So we're going to try a little bit more heat. So I'm now setting my heat pen to 230 degrees Celsius, which is 490-ish Fahrenheit. If this is like the swinging ghoulies, I still have another 200 degrees to go before it'll start to separate the glue they used. The swinging ghoulies, I had to go about 500 degrees Celsius to get the glue to separate. That was ungodly hot. And that does cause the paint to run. But it allows you to disassemble it and you can always touch up the paint. That's why I recommend if it's a piece that breaks often to use hot glue. Because you can heat it back up at a couple of hundred degrees Fahrenheit. And remove it to get back in and fix it again. Especially if it has gears and belts and stuff behind a glued section. Uh, when you're at high temperatures, you do want to keep your heat moving, because if you don't, you will burn the paint, you'll discolor it, you can also bubble it. The hardest part is getting in the back, because it doesn't quite fit. Alright, let's see if that was enough. Oh, and be careful, because it is hot. Go at this is a different way. I'm wondering if I can get the plastic. There we go. The heat, this this whole ticket booth is extremely hot, and I can now separate the plastic from the top of the ticket booth, not the bottom where it was already separated. If the plastic isn't in too deep, I might be able to get the plastic top to there we go to come out. 
uh, sorry, the plastic from the top to come out. This is a uh, resin. Yeah, so this is a resin cap. And then I can remove the plastic ticket shroud. And now I can remove the fascia, which has my really long wire. So now I can work on this outside of the porcelain or ceramic, because I'm not sure which one this is made with, uh, piece. Then when this is reassembled, this can all be glued back together as it's put back in to its respective spots. So if you have to take this apart, see if you can get the separate up here where the top of the ticket booth is. So you can lift it and pull it out. Just be careful, it doesn't come straight out. You have to kind of walk it out because of this light. So. All right, so that wire that held that on just broke. Not a big deal, didn't work anyway. Now I can take a look in here and examine how it's done. Oh, it even has another blob chip. And it looks like they're using Christmas lights for the illumination. So, just to make life easier, I am going to go ahead and unscrew this so I can remove it completely from the porcelain and be able to show it to you easier. So now I can set the house out of the way. Also, it's less likely you'll damage the house itself if you can hit it, break it, or what have you. There's threads on the end of this right here, and this is just a threaded brass piece with a rubber bushing. So it just threads in and then pinches the house between the rubber bushing and the edges of the plastic plug. So, because everything we're doing is right here in this and this. So there's no point to have the rest of this all attached. So there's the blob chip right there. It probably just controls the timing of the lights. Uh, the front side of the circuit board has just some basic components, capacitor, resistor, transistor, etc. Um, which again will control the lights. We need to find out why these four marquee, uh, not marquee, these four awning lights don't work, but the ticket light still works. And you can see if you look right here, that's basically a Christmas light plug, and then these are the short ones that, at least in the modern day, they use a lot, these little short plugs, for your Christmas lights. Uh, these are all incandescent bulbs, so there's a good chance that the reason the center one doesn't work is it's burned out. These other guys that hang down, I can't see. All right, the ones that hang down don't have any lights in them. That's weird. You would have thought they would have. Uh, so these four that don't light up are actually uh, just hollow lenses. There's nothing in them. It's kind of weird, but it may, yeah, as I say, it may light up from the big light, but even the big light only shines through the three holes in the front. So I need to fix this sign and then get it glued back on and get these two wires reconnected. I'm probably gonna have to extend them because they're really short and they're very brittle. So I'm gonna have to untie them from this cluster right here to either solder new ones to the board or just splice into them, depending on how brittle they are. All right, let's uh, poke and prod this sign. Now, if these are incandescent bulbs, I'm going to change them over to LED. The uh, reason being is, is these little incandescent bulbs, they're, they're still available. I just don't want to wait weeks to get them. And the LED will make it run a little cooler, and I can change the color temperature. And this power supply, in case you were wondering, is 3 volts AC. It's probably one of the reasons why they're using incandescents, because LEDs don't like AC. So this sign just appears to be clipped together with some glue, because there's some glue on the bottom seam. The side seams seem to be pretty glue-free. 
And there's even a hole in the sign right here, which also has glue on it. So I'm going to see if this glue is brittle enough that I can just pop it open. If not, we'll, um, we'll heat it up. Once I got it started with the screwdriver, I can now run my fingernail in here and spread the seam. This is using a stack of three incandescent lights. And the wire is sheared at the strain relief, which is that knot right there. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a little bit of dust on this house and it's floating in the air. I'm going to try and untie the strain relief and give this power to see if all three of these lights still work. Uh, they should glow a very mild white or almost a yellow in tinge, I'm assuming. Uh, this knot has glue on it, so I'm trying to uh, separate the knot. You know what? Since I'm going to be repairing the wires anyway, I'm just going to cut the knot off. Let's flip on my power supply. Drop it down to, let's just do two volts. The power supply is DC. Um, incandescent bulbs don't care if it's AC or DC. LEDs do, so there's no polarity issue. Uh, you can see all three are on. I'll turn this off. See all three are glowing. If I bump this up to three volts, which is the maximum the power supply puts out, you can see they're whiter now. And we'll flip it over and put this back on. And you can see how it does the Cinema 56 sign. It has hot spots because it's, they're just lights against a white backer. There's no diffuser in it. But you have the original Cinema 56 sign. It just needs some wires uh, re-soldered to it. Instead of soldering to these two pieces I cut to give me some fresh ends, I'd recommend soldering to the bottom of this light bulb. Right there at these pads and then extending new wire inside. That is my goal. But that is how you open the Cinema 56 sign. Uh, since there's this little notch, I'll put the two pieces back together. You see there's a little notch hole right there. I just use a small flathead screwdriver, pried it, and once it's split, I just use my fingernail to go all the way around. Because the glue they used is, um, well, it's old and brittle. Old and brittle glue doesn't require a lot of heat because it'll just start cracking. Because this, being plastic, if you apply too much heat, you can distort the sign or yellow the white, which we don't want to damage it. Um, I know it's already uh, broken, but we want to keep it as good as possible. So now, let's get these wires out. These are the two wires for the sign. And they are tied in this knot right here. Let's see if we can get them untangled. There's 
one. Tweezers come in handy, especially the ones that are pointy. Uh, these are ceramic, so they don't uh, conduct electricity. Although there's no power in here at the moment. Uh, it's still just the reason why I use them. So if I have a live power source, they don't arc. All right, these two wires are I'm going to turn the light back on and show you. These are the two wires for this sign. If you notice right here, there's two bundles that are heat shrunk together. They break off and power the circuit board, and they also just go directly to this. These two wires are soldered directly to the incoming power, so it uses the full three volts coming in. So there's no resistors, no nothing. It's just direct power right to these wires. So... There's a couple ways to fix this now. Now that I've removed the wires from the glue and the knot, these knots right here, instead of extending these wires, I can feed these wires up through this hole and solder them directly to that sign. There's enough slack. And then when I glue the sign in, because this marquee still isn't attached, I can then tuck the wires back into the bundle. And I believe the reason you do that is neatness, and if any of the wires get in front of this light, it'll cast a shadow on the inside of the actual, mark, the actual marquee. So we don't want to cast any shadows, so we need to keep it behind this bulb. But before we do that, let's find out why this front bulb doesn't work. It's probably burned out. So I'm gonna plug in the power supply again. And... You can see it doesn't work. Matter of fact, the ticket booth light doesn't work anymore either. I'm wondering if I broke the wire. Let's take a look. No, the wires are still soldered. Let's uh, pull it out. There we go. I knocked the bulb loose from the, uh, there's the bulb. I knocked the bulb loose because it's a Christmas light. You can pop it out and pop a new one in. I just knocked it loose from its fitting. There we go. That was lit. Because the uh, it's a Christmas light setup. The bulbs are changeable, technically. At least that bulb is. These ones in the front are not. So I'm using some magnifying glasses and I'm taking a look inside the glass. And. Looks like this one's got a bad filament. There we go. Nope, it's also loose. It's just like a Christmas light. <laughs> it's on now. It's, uh, it is replaceable. That's why I need a magnifier to look down inside. So that was actually pretty simple. As far as making those work, or making this one work, I just had to reseat the bulb. Uh, what I did is I lifted it and then pushed it back down and it recontacted the contacts and bam. We have all three lights working, plus the one light there. And now let's take a look at all the other lights. power on.
Not sure why these three LEDs aren't working. Wires look good. I separated the potential short where they had the solder ball so close together I was able to spread it apart with the tip of the needle nose. Hey, they're working now. Look at that. So it was shorted. Let me uh, open this up and I'll describe what I'm doing. I'll use uh, another light to tell you. And now they're off again. And I should have left it alone. So this is a little incandescent bulb and we have two wires and there's two solder balls and they're so close together they were arcing. I spread them apart to make them work but in the process it cracked one of the solder joints. So if I press on the wire the lights work. So I'm going to have to touch up the solder real quick to make these three lights right here function like they're supposed to. So somehow, in the expansion and contraction of the wires, they moved and touched each other, which is why I have three lights right here in the front that work intermittently. So, let's uh, fire up the soldering iron real quick and get this thing finished and glue all back together. I think every other light's working. Yes. You know, technically, if you have this piece, you don't have to remove it like I did. You sh can probably just remove the marquee sign to get in to replace or try and replace these three light bulbs. So, and then these are the two pins I was talking about that were sticking out. And then there's the bottom plate that sticks underneath. And here's the glue residue and the glue residue from where they glued it that the glue has gotten brittle and come off. So, and I'm going to do this while it's powered on so I can make sure that the lights work. And I'm also going to do this kind of improperly as far as soldering goes. In soldering you're supposed to uh, thin the tip and then solder your joint. Well I can't get in there to run the solder. So I'm going to bring the solder to it by just soldering on the tip and then going down and touching. It's the improper way, but due to the spacing, I'm going to have to do it improperly. It should still give me the same effect though. for a second. The reason I'm turning it off is uh, I'm so close to each of the pads it's arcing and I don't want to burn it out. So I'm going to try and do it the proper way. See if I can get in there without melting anything since uh, this is a very confined area.
I'm using the blade screwdriver to hold the stuff away from the heat of the tip of this. Um, I'm running my soldering iron at 245 degrees Celsius and everything in here is plastic and insulation, so vinyl. And I'm trying to keep this from touching the things I don't need it to, so I'm using this to separate the wires so they don't touch this and melt. So it takes a little bit of patience and practice and so on, but you can do it. Just watch what you're doing. If I can do it, you can do it. Still using the screwdriver, I just have it using its own weight to hold everything out of my way. Almost. The uh, one solder joint didn't hold. Well, let me rephrase that. It's three wires soldered together. Two of them are soldered. One of them fell off. So, I highly recommend if you're doing stuff like this to have a set of magnifiers. Um, because it makes it a lot easier to see because it's really small work. Thinks I got it. Melt on my screwdriver. I keep touching my screwdriver with the soldering iron. I'd rather melt it than the uh, marquee. So. Retin my tip. Problem with having three wires connected together in the same spot is it's easy to get two of them to stay but this third one even though i keep pushing it with the screwdriver keeps sliding out of the way okay i hope that one worked wait for it to cool yes that one held Alrighty, so I should have full functionality of the lights. I do. So, so now all the lights are working. Turn off my soldering iron and unplug it again. So, I'll show you what I was dealing with since I can't show you in the sense that I can't uh, bring it up. have a LED and LED and what they did is they soldered all these together. So here's the green, red, yellow. They're all soldered in a line in groups of three. 
and then in this solder ball right here is one wire and then this solder ball right here is another so we got the positive that goes all the way around this marquee that every third solder joint is connected and then we have the negative on the bottom these two solder joints right here in the middle were touching and then this guy that soldered here when I separated them broke off so the wire instead of going through the contact was this so there's an air gap so I was using the screwdriver to set this back on top but keep these separated because when I soldered it the first time these two joints moved and they soldered themselves back together again that's why it took me a few attempts to get it to where I could get the wire to stay on and not touch the two solder joints together and short it out. Uh, normally, like on a carousel as an example, the carousel is, uh, they have the same type of track that runs around the top for all the outer lights. But the track is more visible, it's on top and the track's farther apart. These itty bitty lights, those tracks are really close to each other. So, makes it a little bit more difficult. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this thing fixed now. Now, if you're going to do it this way, where you're just going to feed the original wires back through, make sure that you actually feed the original wires back through before you solder it in. I'm hoping to do this without pausing any of the video. But when I do pause it, it's to glue this thing back together because the glue I'm going to use is a hard glue and it has a 24 hour setup, which means that once I glue it and set it with some tape, I'm probably going to have to tape this marquee in place. It takes 24 hours for it to uh, solidify. So once it's in that process of being taped and everything, then it can't be moved for 24 hours and well, I'm going to have to let her sit. Now, whenever you're soldering, especially on something old, it's good to re-solder. I mentioned it in multiple videos. Because uh, it allows the new solder to soak into the old solder and also allows heat transfer. So I can now uh, use this to hopefully desolder this wire. Actually, with my magnifiers, the, this is one straight piece of wire that they stripped the insulation off of. So I'm going to trim it where they stripped the insulation and then solder to the ends of this bottom light. So. And let's tin this. These wires aren't accepting the solder, so I'm going to use a little flux to make them more receptive to the uh, hot liquid glue. Again, because these are AC, it doesn't matter which side gets soldered where. Who that's going to leave a mark? Just ran the tip of this into my finger. Look at me. Burned the skin. Mm, smells like chicken. Alrighty. Go. 
there is a, a little notch for the two wires to come through. Um, but let's plug it in one more time and make sure these three lights light up. Look at that. And all my marquee lights are lit up. So now we just need to glue this sign back together. I'm going to put those back in right there. I'm going to use a dab of super glue for my strain relief on these wires. Or gorilla glue, since that's what I'm using. You can use hot glue as well. So that'll be my strain relief. This side is the female side. That's the male side, meaning the ridge goes inside here. So I am just going to put a very thin layer of super glue on the inside, or basically where they had it. They don't have it all the way around. There's gaps. So I'm just going to put an itty bitty amount in the areas that they had it, which there's a lot going up the side here, right there. And there, and there, and here, and here. So it's about 80% of the whole thing has got glue. That's probably why I was able to split it with my fingernail. Should set up pretty quick, but just in case, I'm gonna put a little tape around it to hold it while I move the rest of this. Super glue. I'm going to use hard glues on this, unlike I normally do where I use hot glues. I'm going to um, put glue around the edge. The glue I'm going to use to hold this whole assembly on is going to be uh, hard, super hard glue. It has a 24 hour setup. to while it's starting to harden just move these wires back into position where they were so they don't get caught and they stay out of the light there is a lip on the inside which these actually fit into so I'm gonna put them back in there that's where they had them originally like so like that Now, the only glue I see on this is right here on these four pads. So I'm assuming that once this is in, this piece, the actual sign holder, 
I can glue this marquee in and just glue it directly to the porcelain building. But let's turn off the light real quick, see what this looks like in low light. All right, and one more light here. And last but not least. There we go, look at that. Of course it looked better without the tape, but those uh, little incandescent bulbs are actually pretty bright. As it, it is really easy to read. The Dreaming of a Snowy Village. Holiday special, Saturday family night, and Miracle on One Village Place. And that one light on the bottom does a pretty good job of illuminating as well. likely with some of the hardest parts of doing this next part is going to be getting this back into the back where the hole is. So first thing we'll unscrew the face. it through right here my fingers now I'm gonna try and push it through with one finger through the hole for the main light and when it's sticking through I'm gonna try and screw the cap back on I said try is the key word because this isn't the easiest thing to do removal is always easier than assembly and I lost it it slid out of my finger Take two. So since there's no power, because of course there's no power port in there, it's unplugged, I'm using a screwdriver, a small one, to center it in the hole. Now I'm using my one finger through the light hole to hold it in place, and my other fingers to try and get it to screw on. This will take some patience. And I'm going to use a screwdriver to try and help uh, tighten it. If you don't have it perfectly centered, it won't screw on. So. I wonder how they do this stuff at the factories. Lemax has the same thing where they have some of the porcelain houses with the bung sticking through. Department 56, got it. I always wonder how they were able to do this. I doubt they're paying some dude to spend 
10 minutes to try and get this thing to line up. There we go. Especially when they're pumping out thousands of them. Take a window, make sure that you put the hole in the front and the fake door in the back. Drop it back on. And the sign that says tickets faces out. So you don't put it on backwards and then have an issue. And I'm gonna try and put both pieces on at the same time, the ticket cap and the marquee, and see if and get everything perfectly to line up, like so. Look at that. I'm sure this glue is now hardened. Um, painter's tape and masking tape when you glue pieces together because it won't peel the factory paint off. Don't use duct tape or clear shipping tape, stuff like that. So, it's all in place. Now I just need to separate it a hair and start putting glue and resin in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape the long way around the sides to push this in and hold it flush for 24 hours. <sighs> I'm wondering if that hole in the back had something to do with this thing that's missing right here because that hole in the back's in alignment. So, now that's back together, before I do the final glue job, let's look at it one more time in the dark, or low light, and uh, see what it looks like. Because all I'm gonna do is glue it, and I'm sure a lot of you out there are really familiar with how much you have to glue on these pieces. Again, I don't have the big light bulb because I don't need it because I'm not working on anything there. And there we go. So we have some light coming through the doors because of the white lights in here. The ticket booth is illuminated. The signs illuminated. All the LEDs are flashing like they're supposed to because it's not the whole thing. It's just intermittent ones every third light. And the signs illuminated. Look at that. Beautiful. It's all back together. And actually, even without that big light bulb that goes in the back, this actually looks really good just as it is. If this was in my display, I'd probably leave it without the big light. Or I'd get a dimmer wattage. Because even the side windows have illumination just from the lights that are behind this marquee. So, so this concludes the Cinema 56 from Department 56. Um, the glue I use real fast before I do stop the video is for the hard glue. I found that the Gorilla Clear Glue, which is, uh, I don't know, it, it's a glue that you have to let set for a minimum of 24 hours, <laughs> but it's hard. Once I glue things together with it, they generally don't come back apart. It's better than the super glue, but it has a 24 hour setup. So that's what I normally use. I use the super glue with the brush and without the brush for the small stuff. I normally I use hot glue on most things, but when it's something that's not supposed to come apart, I'll use the super glue. But this hard glue, I will pull this back out. As you can see, it moves. It will run a bead on this shelf, and then I will put glue on these pads, push it all back in, and then wrap the blue tape around it which I put somewhere, <laughs> but uh, right here. Uh, I am not sure what this came from, this piece of uh, silver and blue plastic. This is, so it was just hanging on the inside. So, but everything fits together like it's supposed to, and everything lights up like it's supposed to. So I think we're good. So, little solder, readjusting the bulbs, soldering this back together, taking it apart to get inside where they have the wires where they were sheared at the base. 
resoldering the three lights right here where they touched each other and then in separation the solder joint cracked and then reseating the internal bulbs since the internal bulbs had a tendency of coming loose so but this is it this is the department 56 cinema 56 theater thanks for watching till the next one